I love Easter. I've been anticipating. It's hard for me to sleep the Saturday night before Easter. I just anticipate in thinking about this of what happens in the morning. What happens at, at the break of dawn. The break of history broke 2,000 years ago. And a lot of people just get mixed up with Easter. You know, they asked some kids one time. Sunday school teacher asked some kids, said, Hey, uh, can anybody tell me what Easter is all about? Oh, and one little girl, she raised her hand. She said, I, I, know, I, I know what Easter's all about. Easter's when we shoot all the firecrackers. No, honey, that's not what Easter's all about. Oh, oh, this little boy said, I know what it is. Easter is when we eat turkey and dressing and everybody watches football. Well, no, no, that's not really Easter. And then another little boy said, I know what Easter is all about. He said, okay, what's Easter all about? Easter is when Jesus came out of the grave. And if he sees his shadow, he goes back in for three more months. We got lots of different ideas about Easter. But let me tell you something that's very special. Some of you are here, your visitors today. Some of you, uh, this is your church home. Let me just share with you something really special. There is more to Easter than just a story. Easter is not just about a story. Easter is about the one who is at the center of the story. And God wants you not to just know the Easter story. He wants you to encounter a risen Savior. And that's why we get so excited about Easter and about singing and about... We get a little bit loud and rambunctious and people are raising their hands and people are clapping and people are excited. Why? Because there is a risen Savior. It's more than a story. It's about Jesus Christ who is alive and he has given us hope and a future and a purpose. And he wants to do that to you today. So I want you to take your Bibles and I'm going to share just a few minutes. Because I know that some of you brought some really, really good food that you are just dying to get into as we eat this afternoon. But in Luke chapter 24, I want to share with you a story that is one of the most unique Christian stories in the Bible. I love this story because it gives us an idea of why Easter is such a big deal. It, it gives us the, the importance, not just the story of Easter, but it gives us what the impetus of Easter is really all about. And let me read this together. Would you stand with me for the honoring of God's word this morning? I know you've been standing. I want you to stand and let's honor God's word as we look at the scripture today. The context is this. Let me just re- remind you of what's happened. The last 72 hours... Jesus has laid his life down. They have taken our Lord and Savior and they have arrested him from the garden. They peeled him from the garden. From all of his disciples, they made him alone. They stripped him, as you heard earlier. They began to beat him with a rod, a long reed across his back, on his face. They flogged him until blood And sinew was leaking out of his body like no other human should ever have to go through. They threw him into the praetorium where they placed a crown of thorns upon his head. And blood ran down over his eyes. They threw a purple robe over him to mock him as the king of the Jews. The king who had come to save mankind. You're no king. Jesus with what strength he had, was placed underneath a heavy wooden cross weighing 250 to 300 pounds. And he bore that down the Rio Dolorosa through the streets of Jerusalem at the jeering crowds. Until he got too weak to carry it and he stumbled and a man came and picked that cross up and Jesus walked the rest of the way to Golgotha, the place of the skull. They threw Jesus down upon the cross where they took Roman spikes and nailed through his hands and his feet. And they nailed a sign upon the top of the cross that said, here is the king of the Jews. They raised that cross up into the ground until it fell with a huge thud as it hit the bottom of that hole. And there hung our Lord. 72 hours has passed since Jesus left the garden, since the disciples deserted him. And now 
He hangs upon a cross. He was taken down by Joseph of Arimathea and another Pharisee named Nicodemus. They placed his body in a tomb that had been cut out that Joseph had taken. And they wrapped him and the women put spices upon his body. They rolled the stone in front of the tomb. Herod sealed that stone and put guards there. But that stone couldn't hold him. And after three days, Jesus Christ, who lay dead in that tomb, Spirit of God quickened His body again. And life came back into a dead corpse. And He arose from the grave. And the angel of God rolled the stone away. And He conquered death. And He conquered the grave. It had been a busy 72 hours for these disciples. He'd already made an appearance to Mary and some other women. And in Luke 24, verse 13, it says, Now that same day, of, that same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened, discussing all that I had just shown you, all that I had just talked about. Did you see him? Did you see him coming down the street? They just, they talked about it all. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. They didn't even know it was him. And he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? What are you guys talking about? What is this story that I keep hearing you, you mention? They stood still, their faces downcast. Their countenance was sad. Their counsel was, was hopeless. And one of them named Cleopas asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? Are you serious? You don't know what has just happened the last few days? What things, he said. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, He was a prophet. Powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. And the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death. And they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. It doesn't look like any good is going to turn out of this. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb, Peter and John, and Peter outran him. And he went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish are you? How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what, he said, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going to go a little bit further. Well, guys, it was good seeing you. But they urged him strongly, no, stay with us for it's early in the evening. The day is almost over. Don't, don't, don't leave. Don't leave. You can't leave. Don't leave. Go with us. So he went to them, went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it. And he began to give it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight and they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while we talked, while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Father, bless your word this morning, Lord, as we have come to, to celebrate you, Jesus. Jesus, we're here to celebrate you. And I pray that, Lord, today that as we hear your word, and as in a little bit we leave, 
that, Lord, that we would let this be more than just a story, but this would be an encounter with you. Let your blessing be upon us today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be seated this morning. You see, Easter is much more than just a story. It's an invitation. Easter is... Easter is an invitation to encounter God, to encounter Christ. It's an invitation. It's an open, it's an open desire for, for, for you to encounter Christ. Some of you are on a journey of life, and you're walking through life, and you don't even know that this invitation exists, but you're going to hear about it today. There's an invitation not to just hear about the, the, the story of Easter and to do your Christian duty. And because you live in Texas, everybody just got to go to church on Sunday morning of Easter. It's a, more than that. It's about encountering a risen Christ. I mean, we get all the church stuff. Some of you busted out some shoes and a suit and stuff, clothes that you hadn't wore since last Easter. And you got them on today. And you're sporting them. Some of you have been doing that for so long, you're wearing shoes from 1976. It's like, I use these once a year. They're still good. Guess what? You're in style because that's all back. We get all the church stuff. We even hear, you know, Jesus is risen. Sometimes that's so numb to us. It doesn't mean anything. Oh, Jesus is alive. Yeah, he's alive. Ooh, yeah. It's just like saying, go Cowboys. It, 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 there's, no, there's no real meaning. We just say it because that's just something that we say as Christians. But what we need to figure out is that just like those kids, we know part of the story. But the other part of the story is, is I can't figure out why this story of Jesus being alive has not made a difference in my life. And see, that's where it really all is. You can know all about the story. You can know everything that I told you about the crucifixion. You can know everything there is to know about the Bible and you can still not encounter Jesus. You can know of Jesus and not even know Jesus. And see, that's the whole thing. The story of these men on the road to Emmaus, they were trying, they were trying to, to figure this all out. And this story will teach us something. The story will teach us the difference between what it is just to tell the story of Jesus and to have an encounter with Jesus Christ that changes your life, changes your life forever. These guys weren't dumb. They weren't stupid. They weren't blind. They had heard, they had seen Jesus perform miracles. They had seen Jesus do these things. But now they were just distraught. They didn't know exactly what to do. These two disciples are, are perfect illustrations of what a lot of people in America and a lot of people in Texas are like. They know the story, but they have never had a true encounter with Jesus Christ that changes their life. And friends, let me tell you something. If you desire that today, you can have it today before you leave. Before you leave, your life can be changed with an encounter with Jesus. But we've got to get the story. Because, see, if you, do, if you just have the story and that's all you have, your faith can turn into despair. There were incredible stories about Jesus' resurrection. The women had gone early in the morning. Mary Magdalene went early with other women to anoint the body of Jesus again to keep it preserved. And they told and came back and told the disciples, hey, look, he's not there. The stone has been moved and an angel told us that he is alive. That why do we even look around for him? He's not even here. And these men, as they walked along the road, they told of this, they they reminded of this, this fantastic vision that these women had had in this incredible story that was going on. And still they were downcast. The Bible says in verse 17, it says their faces were downcast. They were sad. Their hearts were heavy. They had just been told Jesus is alive. And yet still they were saddened in their heart. And the same thing with some of you. Some of you heard it over and over already today. Jesus is alive. He is risen, but still nothing has changed in your life. It's just another statement that you make. It's just a piece of the story. And when all you have is just the story of Easter, your faith can lead you to despair. It can lead to despair. You see, the cross had not destroyed these guys' love for Jesus. The cross had basically killed their hope. You know, I really love Jesus. I really believe and I want to believe and I I want to know that he can do all these things. But I'm just not sure that I have the hope, the faith to believe that. We tell ourselves, you know, I'd hope that Jesus would have changed these situations and 
change what's going on, but I guess I was wrong. We love the story of Jesus, but we've lost the hope of its reality a lot of times. And that's what happens to people. We love Jesus and what He stands for, but the hope that He can actually change my life, the hope that He can turn my family around, the hope that He can really give me a future, the hope that He is guiding me, the hope that He's going to lead me to, to, the, to the person that I'm supposed to marry, that hope, is, he, is that, I, I can't match that reality with the story. And we struggle there. We struggle so much there that we fail to even recognize Jesus outside of the story. Verse 16 says, Jesus came up, He's walking alongside them. They're walking down the road, they're still talking about these things. And they walk, He, he starts walking with them, and they don't even recognize Him. They don't even know it's Jesus. Here's what happens when you only have the story. You don't even begin to recognize Jesus outside the story. The only time you, you think or, or know about Jesus is when you're in church or when, or when grandma says, hey, have you gone to church today? Hey, or, when, or when you see a Bible or when you maybe pass Mardell or, or, or when you hear pastor say something or you flip it through KLTY or or whatever the other power of it. That's the only time. But outside of those things, outside of just, you know, just the, the, the story of Jesus, we don't even, he's, not, he's nowhere to be found. We don't even recognize him. We don't see him, him at work. You see, the resurrection was an act of God. The resurrection of Jesus was an act of God that reversed the judgment of sin upon our lives. But let me tell you something. Jesus is the Son of God through which all life comes now and in eternity. The resurrection is an important event. It's a great, it's a great story. But the story of just the resurrection is nothing if you don't have Jesus who is alive and living and can change your life today. It's more than something just churchy and what church people do. Jesus is is working in your life. And some of you may be here and you say, look, I do this once a year. I'm a CEO churchgoer. Christmas and Easter only. <laughs> and I show up, I make mama happy. Grandma's glad. And then I go out my own way. You know what you're doing? You don't even recognize him at work in your life every day. You're missing it. You're missing life. You're missing life because you're missing Jesus. You're just looking at it as just a story. Easter is not just a story. It is a Savior who has brought us hope. If you want hope in your life, don't put your faith in just a story. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Christ. Colossians 1.27 says, He is Christ in you, the hope of glory. If you need hope in your life, it's found in Jesus. It's not showing up one Sunday a year. It's found in a daily relationship with Jesus Christ. If all you have is a story, your faith, your, your faith will turn to despair. If all you have is a story, you will diminish who Jesus really is and what He can do in your life. The more these guys, as they walked along the road, the more they talked about what they had seen, the more they began to devalue Jesus and what he did. It's funny how, how when things uh, get cheapened, that they become less important. How many of you carry change in your pocket all the time? A few of you do. I would say that, you know, I remember this when I could take 35 cents and I could buy a pack of baseball cards and a stick of gum. Now, look, you guys think that I'm that old. I'm not that old because some are saying, yeah, I remember when it was five cents for a pack of baseball. And I would usually I'd chunk the baseball cards and t eat the gum. Thirty five cents. Now they're like three dollars and fifty cents. You say, what's happened? Have baseball cards got that important? No, the dollar has gotten less valuable. You say, what are you talking about? I still like dollars. Yeah, I like dollars too. But one dollar ain't going to get you much anymore unless it's a store that says one dollar. And even then, man, they rip you off. It's like a dollar twenty-five. I'm like, hey, this is a dollar store. Come on, that's false advertising. Dollar or less and it's 105. That ain't right. Whenever things become devalued and diminished, 
People don't want it. Hey, man, I don't want the one. I want the five. You know? I need the five because the one ain't worth anything. I'm not carrying change in my pocket because it won't buy much. You know, unless I'm going to, I'm walking into Walmart. I see those, you know, just like a one jolly rancher. You ain't going to buy a bag with a quarter. We devalue things, and when they cheapen, when we cheapen things, they become less important. Now, how does that have, what does that have to do with this story? Look in verse 19. Verse 19, he says, well, hey, what, what are you guys talking about? What's this Jesus asking? What are you guys talking about? What is this story? And he's like, really? You haven't heard anything? You haven't heard what's been going on the last several days? And look what they say. They said, Jesus, this man, he was a great, what, prophet. He was a great prophet. And that was a term of endearment. It was a term of respect. Yet still, a week ago, you know what they were calling him? Messiah, son of God, anointed one, king of kings. And Lord, that's what they were calling him. But now, uh, must just be a prophet. Because, I mean, if he really was the son of God, we wouldn't be in this mess. Jesus isn't around anymore, you know, so I guess it didn't turn out the way the story what I, what I thought. I, I, I guess that he wasn't who he said he was. He was a really great preacher. He, he did really good. And, and they start drawing conclusions. They start trying to write the end of the story. You see, that's what we do. If you have just the story, many times what we do is we try to write the end of it. Some of you have stopped praying for things that you know that you need to pray about because you think, ah, I really... You know, I've been praying for this for so long, it doesn't even matter. I don't even think God even cares. I don't even think He can probably even do anything about it. Tell you what, Lord, I'll take care of the small stuff. You just handle the big stuff in my life, and then we'll go from there. You know? Some of you, you know, you, you're, you, you attend church, and, and when you attend church, attending church, well, it's good, but it's, you know, it's just a season in my life. I went through that season, and, and we devalue the, the fellowship with other believers. We devalue, you know, hanging out and being encouraged on a weekly basis. We devalue those things. And then all of a sudden, it doesn't take long, we find ourselves once a month, maybe, and then once or twice every few months, and then finally we're CEOs. We got the business. And we diminish the the value of what God can do in our life, and we cheapen those things, and it becomes less important to us. But I want you to notice something. As these guys walked, if you look in the Scriptures, as, as these guys walked with Jesus, something began to change. Something began to change. It became less about just the story of what Jesus had been doing and more about this guy that was telling us the story of not just how what happened, but how it's going to happen and how it is. Less about what just has been in the past. Let me tell you something. There are folks in this room right now who you can look back in your life and you say, man, God was good back there. That was good. Man, back when I went to camp, that was an incredible experience. And that's all well and good, but friend, that's been 40 years ago. And you can't live on food that you ate 40 years ago. And if you're trying to, you're starving yourself to death. You can't live on the encounter that you had with Christ three months ago or three weeks ago or even yesterday. You need a fresh encounter with Jesus. You have to encounter him recently and freshly and newly. Because if you just have the story, you diminish what Jesus can do in your life. New circumstances come up. People have allowed Christ to become diminished in their life. It's not a big deal anymore. My faith and my strength in Christ comes from a daily relationship with Him. My confidence in in my marriage doesn't come from what's happened over the past 20 years. It comes because that beautiful lady that I get to see every day is the one who I can speak to and talk to. And even though that I don't talk to her nearly enough as she would like, or I don't give all the details, you, you, you guys have ex- you've heard me explain that before. Well, it works in my house too. Not that we haven't had our own challenges, but my, my marriage is not based upon those challenges and what we've come. My marriage is based upon her being right in front of me right now. Her value has not lessened in me. And the closer that we get, the more consistent that we, that we communicate, the closer we are and the value is placed upon him and the power that, that I see that, that we can have together is there. And the same thing with Christ. The more consistent you are with him and the closer you get to him, 
you'll realize that his value goes up in your life and you don't just look past him and saying, well, he can't handle this one. Working and he wants and he is capable of working out things in your life. Even when the world seems like it's falling in around you, even when it feels like the bricks of your house are coming off, Jesus has the power to work in you. He is the resurrected Christ that wasn't just in the grave and died on the cross and healed the sick back in the New Testament days and he delivered people. It wasn't just all that great story, but Jesus still does that today, friend. He can still heal. He can still deliver. He can still repair things that have been broken for a long, long time. We have to resist looking at the circumstances. and We have to start looking for Jesus. It happened with Peter. Look at Peter. What did he do? He walked up to Jesus. He said, Jesus, I'll never deny you. I'll stick with you until the very end. And before he could barely get that sentence finished, Jesus said, Peter, I hate to tell you this. But uh, it's not going to finish the way you thought it was going to finish. You got part of the story right, but you're trying to write your own conclusion. You're trying to figure this thing out. And let me just tell you something. He says in Luke chapter 22, he says, Simon, Simon. When somebody says, you know, when your mom ever, when your mom said your name twice, how many of you knew she, she was mean in business? Or she said your full name, that was it. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. He's going to shake you out. Look what Jesus says. I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, when you have gotten your ship righted, when you have gotten back on course, when you have gotten gotten away from that doubt and that fear and you have placed all that behind you and you start looking at me again, I want you to turn back and I want you to strengthen your brothers. Let me tell you something. There's some of you in here in this room where the enemy has told you that there is nothing that can be done in your situation. That there is nothing that can be done that can, that can, that can remedy your marriage, that can remedy your family situation. There's nothing that can be done that will remedy your financial situation. There's nothing that can be done that can turn your kids in the right direction. There's nothing that can be done about your health. And you have allowed the enemy to speak those things into you and diminish who Christ is. And all you have is just an empty story that's just filled with words, but there's no real true meaning or power behind it. Don't allow the enemy to, to pour that stuff into you and diminish the value of Christ because there is a heavenly father who is sitting in heaven and to his right hand, his son, Jesus, who rose from the grave is sitting at his right hand in a place of authority and he is interceding for you. He is praying for you that you, when you get your ship righted, when you finally realize that it's not a story, but it's an encounter with him, that if you will look to him and when you get your ship right, when you get like Peter and you turn yourself back, that he can do anything. Anything in your life, he can deliver you and save you and redeem you and change you and your whole family. Once you get it right, and you can encourage everybody with that message. Because that's not just a story. That's a testimony. Look what Jesus can do in me. Look what he can do. He can turn things around. He has the power to do so. And your confession begins to change. Instead of your confession being one of despair that no one can change me, your confession goes to, I can be healed, I can be delivered, I can be restored, I can be free, I can be used, I can be forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. Easter is more than an amazing story that gets told every year. Because I want you to understand, Jesus is not a character in the Easter story. He is the central figure and the ultimate conclusion of all history. A lot of people wonder how their life is going to turn out. Let me give you a spoiler alert on everybody's life right here in this place. Spoiler alert for the end of your life. You will stand before God alone one of these days. Spoiler alert for your life. Okay, In case you're still trying to figure out how it's going to work out, that's how it works out. You'll stand before the Lord one of these days and you'll have to answer to him of what you did with Jesus. And you can say, well, hey, let me just tell you the story. At that point, the Lord's going to say, you know, I don't really want to hear that story. That was painful. The story I want to hear is 
Did you encounter my son, the resurrected Savior? Did you encounter him? And if you really want to know what life is to live free, if you want to to know salvation and experience real hope and real joy, let me tell you something. The only conclusion that you can come to is that Jesus is the answer to all of those things. Jesus is the conclusion to the whole story, the Easter story, because at the end of your life, the conclusion, you are standing in front of him. You see, Jesus concludes the story. The story doesn't end when he rises from the grave. The story doesn't end as he walks us through life on a daily basis. The story ends when we meet him face to face. Cleopas and his friend, they were going back home. Well, what an experience, man. This has been one incredible weekend. But I guess I'm going to go back home and back to Emmaus, you know, start my Cochrane business up again. I'm just going to kind of resume business as usual i mean i guess nothing nothing's really changed it's all the same nothing's nothing seems to have happened their expectations led them they missed jesus they assumed some different conclusion to the story and the reason why that most people miss jesus just in their daily life is because he just is too normal for them in many occasions mary first one to see an empty tomb thought that thought that he was a gardener can you imagine Jesus with his work gloves on, planting flowers? Later on, the disciples, they didn't even recognize Jesus because he was on the shore and they didn't realize him. He's over there cooking, cooking lunch for them, cooking fish. You see, a lot of people, they come and they want this esoteric experience. And they, you know, back in the Bible, it was all about, they thought it would be gold crowns and, you know, big, huge chariots and big procession lines and, 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 and big fanfare. And Jesus just shows up on this ordinary road in ordinary life with these two ordinary disciples. And I'm thanking God that he just likes to interact and he, he does things through ordinary people. Some of you are sitting there thinking, how can this message be life-changing for me? I mean... I'm in an ordinary church with an ordinary preacher on an ordinary Easter. Unless you encounter Christ. And he takes that ordinary day and he turns it into something extraordinary. That's why the most important thing in this church is not me. Or who leads worship? Basile did a great job filling in for Viv. She got called out her Viv Viviana's grandma passed away on Thursday. And so we just said, hey, we gotta have a pinch hitter, and Basile did a great job. The most important thing about this church is that people can know the presence of God, and when they feel the presence of the Lord calling in their heart, that they can come and they can encounter a Jesus who can transform their life. And some may be like Thomas. I don't believe it until I see it. Jesus can accommodate those requests. Thomas, here's my hands. You want to put your finger there? Check that out. People are looking for this wild experience, but Jesus is speaking right now. Right now, some of you are hearing the voice of God and you're thinking, man, what is that? It's not your stomach grumbling because of hunger. Everything in life points to Christ. You look at Disney. Look at the movies. Look at the movies that come out. All of these movies, what they're doing, the world is looking for a story that can explain what Jesus can do in our lives. It happens all the time. Beauty and the Beast can take this beast, turn him into a prince. You know, you got these, these cute stories frozen, you know? Let it go. Let it go. That's all I'm going to do. You got the battle between good and evil. We write our own story. Lord of the Rings. There's Lord of the Rings nerds in this church. I'm not going to tell them. Tell, listen to these people clapping. They can like quote this stuff. The battle between good and evil. Good's going to win. Just keep being good. You can be transformed from a beast into a beauty. 
You just got to kiss the right woman. No. You see, everything points to Christ. The world tries to write its own story of the transforming, saving work of Jesus Christ. And we need to stop looking for serenity and peace and we need to start looking for salvation. Stop looking for just stress relief in my life and we need to start putting our trust in Jesus Christ because the Bible says in verse 30 that when he sat down, when they sat down and they, he began to break bread and he just began to share with them and fellowship with him and he began to give truth to them, their eyes were opened. And they saw something that they had never seen before. It wasn't just a story anymore. This was real. This was an encounter with Christ. And one of the greatest scriptures, I love it, verse 32. They looked when he appeared to them and they, he just vanished. Once they recognized he's gone, boom. And they looked at each other and said, I knew it. Didn't our hearts burn? Weren't our hearts burning inside of us? As he opened the scriptures, wasn't something going on inside me? I'll tell you right now what happens when you hear the gospel preached. Something begins to burn inside of you that says, you know what, that makes sense. I, 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 I get it. I'm getting there. It may not be the first time or the second time you... talked to him before ever first time i'd ever talked to this guy a few months later that had a burning had been started in his life it was a fire that was lit it may have been just a spark but it was lit and it smoldered and it began to grow and when the holy spirit begins to deal with your life let me tell you something you are an uncomfortable human being you can't find satisfaction in anything. You just feel like at, at the end of every day, you're still missing something. It's because God has life rigged. You can't do it without Jesus. And every day that you go without Christ, you just become more and more discomfort and in despair and without hope. And you look for all types of other things to try to, 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 to push that down, to try to stop the burning. But the burning is still there and your heart is on fire. And then all of a sudden, I'm driving down the road, down 35, and I get a phone call. Hey. I was just wondering if I could uh, take you up on that cup of coffee. Yeah, sure. I've seen God transform his life and change him and move him along and work things out in him. Does he have a long way to go? His wife says so. <laughs> but did he, was he turned around? Was it more than just a story? He'd grown up in, in preachers' homes and in Christian homes, and he's heard the story over and over and over and over again. Like some of you, you've come to Easter church every Sunday for the last 20 years. You've heard the story over and over and over again, but you haven't had that encounter with the risen Jesus yet. And that's what makes all the difference in the world. God can change you and transform you and make you completely different and get you on a track that you're going to live your life fulfilled and satisfied and with complete hope because Jesus is the conclusion of the story. 
And if you can just find the last page today and just go ahead and go there. Some of you do that. You pick up a book and you go to the last page. If you can just go to the last page today. And if you'll just meet with him. And if you will encounter him, he will change your life. And all the other pages in between will be completely different. Because you have been changed and encountered by an encounter with Jesus in your life. Today is your day. Let that burning happen in your life. He's, he's got the power to change you. He's got the power to change your circumstance and your family. Man, he's got the power to touch your husband that wouldn't even come to church with you on Easter Sunday. He's got the strength and the power to do that. He can't. Don't diminish his power. Say, Pastor, I've been praying. Don't let the enemy plant that seed in your life. Trust in him because, because at the end of the day, he is what you have. He is your strength in your soul. Sir, you come here and say, man, it's all. I just can't get my pieces put back together. The puzzle piece that you're missing is the puzzle piece of Christ. Put him in the center of the the puzzle and complete the picture. Let hope come to your life today. I'd like for everyone in this room just to bow your heads this morning. I'd like for our worship team to come back, please. With everybody just patiently and quietly... Allowing that flame to burn. Very. Initially in your heart. Right now you're you're feeling the voice of the Holy Spirit. I believe that without a doubt. And you've listened to me for the last few minutes. And some of you don't even know who I am. Some of you have been in this church for quite a while. And you know it's just been a story to you. It's time for you to have an encounter with Christ. In just a few moments. We're going to give an opportunity for anyone who has never encountered Christ ever. They've never given their heart to Jesus and said, I want to make him my Lord and Savior. My Savior in that he can forgive all of my sin and all of my past. And I want to make him my Lord in that from this day forward, I'm going to live and follow him just as he beckons and calls. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to give him everything that I have. I'm going to turn my life over to him so whether my life doesn't look like it used to look like, but I'm going to different (coughs) order. That's making Jesus your Lord. I'm going to give you that opportunity in just a moment. We're going to ask you to, 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 to pray a prayer with one of our prayer team members. And we're going to ask you to, to let them know who you are so that they can call you and encourage you. Man, we've got some good people in this church that are following Jesus and doing a great job of it. But don't let it just be a story or a box that you check in. Or just filling out your name. It's more than that. It's an encounter with Jesus. It's an encounter with Jesus. This morning, I'm going to give you that invitation. To experience more than a story, but an invitation to experience Jesus Christ. Just a moment, I'm going to ask everyone to stand. And when we all stand, I want you to just remain with your heads bowed, with your eyes closed, nobody be looking around. And I'm going to ask you to respond. When I ask the question, do you need to know Jesus today? You want to know him more than just the story of Easter, but you want to know him and encounter him. I'm going to ask you to lift your hand. And then I'm going to ask you something else. After you've lifted your hand, I'm going to ask you to put your hand down and I'm going to ask you to come to the front. And as you come out, you'll notice that people are going to be following you. They're not stalking you. They're they're coming to lift you up and encourage you because they have made that same walk before. You see, the walk that these guys were walking down was a walk that encountered Jesus. And I'm going to ask you to make the same walk today. Instead of coming to Emmaus, you're coming to Jesus. That's your destination. And the walk that you're going to take is a walk where he is going to meet you and you may not even see him step out in the aisle and you're going to feel that that hand he's going to be in his hand is going to be in your heart and he's going to say hey I'm right here I'm going to change your life your eyes are going to be opened and there's going to be a fire that's placed upon your in your in your heart that's going to make a difference in the rest of your life I'd like for everybody in the room just to stand with me Everybody stand reverently With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, let the Holy Spirit begin to speak to you right now. And you say, Pastor Scott, it's just been a story for years and years. I've come to church. 
I've come to church almost every week. I've come to church only on Easter. I've only come to church, you know, once. Uh, but it's always just been a story that somebody's just told, but I've never encountered the main character of the story. If you're here today, you want to encounter Jesus, would you just slip your hand up? Someone in this room, just slip your hand up. Here's one right back here. Thank you, sir. Yeah, right back here in the back. Anybody else? Put your hand up. Just raise your hand. Shoot your hand up and say, that's me. That's me. I want to encounter Christ today. Not tomorrow. Today. Today. Anybody else? Don't let anybody or anything, don't let fear talk you out of it. Don't be ashamed of Christ. He laid everything open for you. You want that encounter. You want it to change. Today is your day. Don't put it off to tomorrow. You may not make next Easter. It may just be today. How many of you would say, I need to know him today. Today is the day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Don't don't let it slip by. You're here today. You know your life is not right. You know it's not where it needs to be. And you know that you need Jesus today. You need to encounter him today. Would you slip your hand up? Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you, sir, for your courage. Thank you, ma'am, for your bravery. Thank you, sir, all the way in the back. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, in the back. Thank you. As our prayer team gets ready to come and to move out, when they move out, I want everybody to have a, someone behind them. They're going to sing this song, and I'm going to invite you to take that walk. You're going to take that walk with Jesus. And you're going to encounter him today. And we're going to pray with you. And we're going to pray that your life never changes. It'll change from what it was to what it used to, to what it is going to become in Jesus' name. And it's going to be that way the rest of your days. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need to, I need to have an encounter with Jesus today. I've been saved, but it's been a long time. I haven't encountered him in so long, I can't even remember what it's like. You may need to just step out from where you are and not worry about anybody and not worry about it being Easter or lunch or anything. You just need to step out. As they sing this song, I want you to raise, if you raised your hand, I want you to move out and I want you to stand just right along the front here on either side, whichever side you want to stand in front of these steps. And I want you to come and I want you to just begin to ask Jesus to show himself to you.